Hey guys, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to create the item database for our inventory system. We're going to define all the items in our system. I'm not going to have many, but I'm sure you'll have a ton for yours because you have an actual game going. I just have a little demo going. So I'm going to create some just dummy items to play around with and, um, and show you how to construct a simple database of these items. And then in the next lesson, we're going to create the recipe database in a very similar fashion. So I'm going to create again a C sharp script. I'm going to call it item database. I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio. Oh, and I want to check off item structure and recipe structure. There we go. So now this is where it starts to get fun. We start to have some fun with data here. And I know that doesn't sound too exciting, but trust me, it, it is. So to do that, we're going to create another generic collection similar to the dictionary, except it only has one value. It doesn't have the key value pair like the dictionary where we have the stat name and then the stat value. It just has a value of a certain type. So to do that, I'm going to say public and I'm going to create something called a list. It's a generic list. So we have to have the angle brackets once more. And like we defined the two types for the dictionary, we have to define a single type for the list and it will hold a list of this type. So if I had integer, we would have a list of ones and tens and hundreds or whatever it may be. But in this case, we're going to have a list of a type that we created called item, right? So we have the item type here. It's a class and then it has these things in here that we can use, right? Pretty cool. So I want to have a list of those and that's going to represent my item database. I'm going to call it items. And again, I'm going to initialize it like I did the dictionary new list item. Pretty cool. So now what I want to do is I'm going to get rid of these methods once more. I don't know what that was all about. And I'm going to write a method that allows us to build the item database. It's just going to be where I define the values for my items at. And then I want to call it in the awake or start method and it's going to handle the rest. So I want to write a void which means it returns no value. So if you have an int method, it will return an integer. If you have an item method, it will return an item. But in this case, it returns nothing. It's going to be build item database, what we'll call it. Needs no parameters. It's just going to do something. Now I'm going to create a new item list and I'm going to populate it with items. And we're going to do this all in one statement. It's going to be very cool. And I actually have a new list created here but I'm going to create a new list down here. So it's not necessary to have it here, but I'm going to keep it there for now. So I'm going to type items is equal to, so items is the list. Keep that in mind. This is the field that we created called public list item items. And I'm going to say it is equal to again, new item or sorry, new list of type item. But this time we're going to initialize it with some values and the values we're going to initialize it with is just a few items, right? So we're going to create some items to do that. We're going to use the curly braces and we're going to add a semicolon to the end. So your curly braces, everything inside of the curly braces, whenever we define a new object like this, will define the values that it's initialized with. So we want to initialize the item database items list with some items in it just makes sense. So to do that, we're going to say new item. We're going to use that new or we're going to use that item constructor by saying new, which means it's going to create a new object in this case, a new item. And then we can pass in to the constructor values to build that item using that blueprint. Watch how this comes together. So new item. Now, if I go inside here, I want to do my parentheses. I can see I can pass in an item type which is the clone constructor that we created, or I can pass in an ID title, description, icon, and stats. Now, like I said before, we're not going to be passing in a sprite icon. We're going to be grabbing that from the resources folder. So I'll have to change that for this to work. I'm going to pass in the ID of one for this. We're going to start at one instead of zero because zero is going to represent an empty item, a null item, no item. So we can define our recipes using zero, meaning no item in that slot and one meaning that item or 20 meaning that item and so on. But zero means that slot is empty. Doesn't require an item in that slot to craft. So we're going to start at one. Then I'll say the name of the item. We'll make a diamond sword. Once a description, uh, well, a sword made of diamond, very descriptive. 
wants an icon that is a sprite. I'm going to skip that for now, even though I can't do that legally. I'm going to skip for now and then remove it from the constructor here in a second. But it then wants a dictionary of stats. So in fact, what I'm going to do really quickly is I want to go in here and I'm going to remove this from the constructor because I'm not going to be using it that way. And then I am going to define my dictionary that is of stats. So I'm going to do this on a new line down here. It doesn't matter what line we're on as long as we are within the same statement and a statement is defined by the semicolon and the starting point. So the semicolon here is where the statement ends. All this is within the same statement. So I'm going to say new dictionary because we're passing in a parameter of a type dictionary. I have to create that dictionary first. And that's going to allow me to, to set it up here very easily by just saying, yeah, it's a string int dictionary. And then what I can do is I can define much like I'm defining the items, new list item here with default values with default initialized values. I can do that for the dictionary as well, because I'm just creating it here. And then I can pass in some values that the dictionary will hold when it's initialized. So to do that again, I'll use the curly braces like we are for the items uh, list constructor. And now within this it gets pretty cool here. What I can do is I can define a string value and then the, 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 say the power being the string value and then 20 being the power level. So I'll do that again in curly braces. And I'm going to have quote defining that this is a string. It's going to say power and then comma, the value of power 15. So the diamond sword has a power stat of 15. Very simple. And this is how we define the new item in our string and dictionary power is equal to 15 and I can define more. That's the whole point of this, right? I can define as many as I want. So power is 15. We'll say uh, defense is seven, whatever it may be up to you. And you could do that for however many stats you have in your game and however you want to do that. And whenever you want to look up the value of the diamond sword, say the power stat, you would just go through quickly. I can show you here, say items, zero dot stats you could get the power level just like that and that will give you the power level in a string format very simple but i want to have multiple items in my item database obviously so i'm going to do that again kind of like i did with the power and defense here i have multiple items defined in the initializer for the dictionary i can do the same thing for my items so i want to copy this and i'm going to paste it notice the comma there so i can add as many as i want now I'm going to have this be ID2. We have to increment every time. And this is going to be a diamond, we'll say diamond ore. And I'm just going to say a shiny diamond. And maybe diamond ore doesn't have a power or a defense stat. Maybe it has a value stat or something like that. Maybe it's worth a lot of money. Maybe it's worth 2,500 somethings, perhaps. And then again, I can add another item here that is of uh, ID3. We'll call it a steel sword a sword made of steel again very descriptive descriptions and i can have again a power level of this would be less than diamond sword ideally so it'd be a power level of eight and it could have other stats as well again however many you want however you want to do this for your game a defense stat maybe it has better defense than the uh than the diamond sword for some reason i don't know I don't know the lore behind diamond swords and there you go. So now we have an item database, at least with items defined. We don't have anything that calls this method yet, so it doesn't actually happen. But we have the, 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 the meat of the database defined. So now what I want to do is I want to make sure that whenever this object is initialized, whenever item database pops into the game, whenever the game starts, in my case, because item database is always going to be there, I want to make sure build item database gets called. The way I can do that is I can define a method. You notice when we started, we had start and update. Well, we could do start, and that happens when the object is initialized, but a bit before that happens, the awake method is called. And I wanna make sure that this happens before anything tries to access it. This is data that needs to be initialized at the earliest possible state. So I wanna say awake. So we're gonna create a method that is a void. It is private by default, but I'm gonna get rid of that anyway. And it's called awake. So now what I can do is say build item database is called on awake. So whenever this item first awakens, 
the first thing it's going to do is call its awake method. The first thing it can do that we that we're going to be accessing is call its awake method, and then that's going to happen, and it's going to call build item database. So now we have these items defined on our item database in our game. Pretty cool, but that's no good on its own. We don't have a way to go through and find a certain item that we're looking for by the ID. Say we're looking for ID of 15. Well, it would take us a bit of querying to get to that point to find that. So I want a simple method that I can call and I can pass it an ID and then it will return the item based on that ID. You could even do it by the item name or the item description, but I'm going to restrict it for now to the ID to keep it simple. So you know how I mentioned that void means it returns nothing. And then if you have an, a type there, that means it returns that type of object. We're going to do that for this. I'm going to have a public method. We're going to be accessing it from elsewhere in our code. It's going to be a public method that returns a type of item and it's going to be called get item or find item or uh, get item by this or whatever you want it to be. In my case, simply get item. It's going to take a parameter that is an integer ID. So I can grab the ID of these items, find one that matches what I passed in here for the ID and then return that item. So how do we do that? There's a ton of ways we can go about doing this, but the best way for this course is, is to keep it very simple, but also where we learn some. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through every item in the items database, and in this case, the items list, and I'm going to pass in a condition. If the item ID matches the ID I passed in, that's the one I want, return that item. Luckily for us, there is a built-in way to do this on the items collection. So to do that, I want to say items dot find. And this is going to loop through, look at every single item in the items list, and it's going to compare it to a little uh, a query that we pass it. We're going to say, hey, I'm looking for this that equals this. If you find it, return that item to me, and then I will pass it back to whatever called get item. So items dot find. This is where we have to define a predicate, which is what I just said. We have to define a query. So to do that, I'm going to first use something that you may not have used up to this point. We're going to use a Lambda operator. So on the left side of the Lambda operator, you're going to have the input variable, which in our case is going to be a variable that will have the value of the item that we're currently looped on top of. So if we're looping over the, all the items in this and we get to the diamond sword here, Whatever that we define on the left side of the Lambda operator will be the member that contains that reference to that item. So I'll say, we can just say item and then the Lambda operator. So on the left side, we have the input variable. Now on the right side, we have the expression and that's going to be what we are looking for. The, in a sense, the query that we are passing in. So I want to check to see if the item.id is equal to the ID that I just passed in. So item being the the field, or sorry, the variable we defined right here that will contain the item that we are looped on top of currently. And once this happens, it's going to then it's going to then compare it to the ID we passed in for every single item. But when it finds one, it's going to be okay. I found one. Then it's going to give us that item back as a return value for find. So then all I have to do is return that whole expression back out. And it's going to return the item that the find method found to whatever called get item. Very simple. Loop through every item, compare its ID to the ID we passed in. If it finds one, return that back to whatever happened. If it doesn't find one, okay, no problem. So there we go. And you can see how easy this would be to actually do it for another value as well. So I could say get item by string uh, title. Then we just do item dot title and compare it to the title we just passed in. If it finds one, it will return it back just like this one does. And you could do it by any member on the item object, member being a field on the item. In this case, title, description, icon, ID, and the stats list. And that's gonna be it for the item database. In the next lesson, we're going to create the recipe database, which is gonna be very similar to this, except we have to write the ability to compare recipes to the items in our crafting table. We don't have a crafting table uh, panel yet, the window, the, the grid, we don't have that yet, but we can, also, we can easily work with 
just an empty array that will eventually be the items in the crafting table. And that's going to be in the next lesson. I will see you there.